Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to do a clean installation of Windows 11. So when I say clean, I mean not an upgrade. We're going to be starting from scratch with a fresh installation, which means we're going to be wiping everything off the Windows drive on the computer. So before doing this, obviously make sure you back up your files to you know a flash drive or an external hard drive or to the cloud. Or if you have another drive inside your computer, you could back them up there. But one thing you want to make sure of when installing Windows is that you pick the correct drive. You don't want to install Windows on your backup drive on accident. Okay, so we're going to show you a couple ways to do it. So the first way is going to be using the media creation tool from the Microsoft site. And then the second way, we're just going to make our own flash drive with an ISO file downloaded from the Microsoft site. Okay, so obviously this is different than doing an upgrade. So we have a video showing how to upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11. If that's what you're trying to do, you could check that out instead. I'll put a link in the description for that. All right, so we're going to go to the Microsoft site here. And I'll put a link in the description for this as well. So we don't want to do the installation assistant because we're going to be doing a clean installation from a boot flash drive. So this is more for if you want to do an upgrade within Windows itself. So obviously you're going to need to do this on your computer or on another computer if your computer is not running at the moment. All right, so we want to find the Create Windows 11 Installation Media section and click on Download Now. So we're just going to open the file here. All right, accept the agreement. Okay, so it detected English and we're doing Windows 11. You can uncheck this box if you want to pick a different language. All right, so we're going to be using a flash drive. Then for the next method, we're going to use the ISO file. So make sure your flash drive is at least eight gigabytes and make sure there's nothing on it you want to save because it's going to be erased. Okay, so we have the SanDisk F drive, and this is an actual hard drive, so make sure you pick your flash drive and not your internal hard drive. It's reading this as an external drive for some reason. So click on Next. All right, so it's going to have to download Windows, which is going to take a while, so we'll pause the video for that and then be back when it's on to the next step. All right, verifying the download. All right, so now we're creating Windows 11 Media, so this will take some time as well. Okay, so now it's complete. That last step took quite a while, so it says your USB flash drive is ready. So if we go and look at it, here's the flash drive with the Windows setup information on it. Okay, so that is method number one. So then you'd be able to boot to that flash drive and install Windows, which we'll be going over shortly. All right, so now let's try the other method where you download the ISO file here. All right, so pick the option. There's only one here. Click on Download Now. Pick your language. Confirm. Okay, then click on 64-bit download since Windows is only 64-bit now. That's your only option. Okay, let's save this to our desktop just for fun here. Okay, so this will take a couple minutes to download, so I'll be back for that. Okay, so the download is complete. And here's our ISO file on the desktop here. Okay, so for our next method, we're going to be creating a bootable flash drive using Rufus. So this will work the same way as the media creation tool in Windows. I think it's a little easier to do and a little faster, but you just have to download the ISO file, of course. All right, so once you download Rufus, there's nothing to install. You just run it. So I'll have a link in the description where you could download it. So just double click it. Okay, so you got to pick your flash drive, so we only have one here. So we're going to keep disk or ISO image, and we're going to select our ISO image file. Okay, so we want to pick the standard Windows installation. So here's the volume label for the flash drive. It's going to format it NTFS. 
cluster size, leave that as the default. Then you have some other advanced format options, which you shouldn't have to change. Then you have some advanced drive properties, which you shouldn't have to change as well. So pretty much all you're doing is selecting your flash drive, selecting your ISO file that you downloaded and everything else you should be able to leave the same. So we'll click on start and you have some options here. So if you want to remove the requirements for the four gigs of RAM, secure boot and TPM, you could check these boxes. Uh, remove the requirement for an online Microsoft account. You could do that and have it create a local account with a username. You could check that as well. So you shouldn't have to check these options unless your computer does not meet the requirements for Windows. So there is a tool you could use for that as well to see if your computer meets the requirements. So if it does, you could probably uncheck these. If not, then you could try it with these. So since we're doing a proper Windows installation, I'm going to uncheck these, but just know that there are options in case you need to use them. So it says, warning all data on this device will be destroyed. Click OK to continue. All right, so this will take a few minutes as well, so we'll pause the video once again. Okay, so the process has completed. It took some time to do. So don't get confused when it says ready and has a start button. It still means it's done here. So if we look at our drive again, it looks the same as it did when we used the uh, Windows Media Creation Tool. So just another option for you to uh, create your bootable flash drive media. Okay, so we'll close that. So now the next step is up to you to figure out how to change the boot order of your computer so it boots from the flash drive. So you might have to go into your BIOS or UEFI and change the boot order. Or some computers will have a specific key like F12 or F10 or Escape where it'll bring up a menu where you could change the boot order and then you want to boot to your flash drive. So that way that's the first thing that loads when you turn on your computer. All right, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to shut this down and then boot up to the flash drive and then we'll start the Windows installation process. Okay, so now you're going to see this part here. It says press any key to boot from CD or DVD. So just because it says CD, don't go thinking it's reading your CD. It's still a flash drive. They just never changed the uh, default text for the boot up menu. So it might look like Windows starting, but it's really just starting the installation. All right, so you have this first screen here. So you just need to pick your language. It should be correct by default, but you could change it if you need to. All right, then we just want to click on install now. So on this screen, you could put in your key from Microsoft Windows. So if you have a computer you bought from the store, you should have a sticker on it with the key. Or if you don't, uh, there is a way you could get the key and then that way you could add it later and activate it. So you could put it in here, but I always like to uh, add it later after Windows is installed. So I'll put a link in the description where you could see how to find your product key for Windows. All right, so I'm gonna click on, I don't have a product key just to continue. All right, so here you need to pick the version of Windows that you are running. So if you go to your Windows settings and look for the about section, it should tell you, you're probably running home if it's a home computer and it should say so on your sticker as well. So we're gonna go with home because if you install one of these other versions and try and use your key, so let's say you have a key for home and you install Pro, it's not gonna work. So it needs to match up. All right, we're gonna accept the agreement. Okay, so we're not doing an upgrade, so I'm gonna click on custom. Okay, so now this is where you need to be careful. So if you have more than one hard drive, one thing you should do is look at the uh, drive size to make sure you're looking at the right one. So I know my C drive is 80 gigs, and it also says primary here. Notice how it says primary here too as well but I know this is the right one. It's drive one and there's three partitions. This reserved and this system are part of Windows. And also down here we have a recovery drive. So this current C drive for Windows has four partitions on it. So this is my backup drive, the data and the reserve partition for that. You can see it says drive zero. So I'm gonna delete everything here that says drive one. Just be careful doing this. Oh, 
Okay, so now you can see I have drive one with 80 gigs free unallocated space. So you can create a new partition if you want to split it up. Let's say you wanted to split this up into two uh, drives like a C and a D. But if you want to use all the space on the drive, you could just click on next and it'll automatically uh, create a partition and format it for you. Okay, so now we're going to copy the files here for Windows and start the installation. So this will take several minutes. So I'll be uh, pausing the video for this as well. Okay, so now it's going to reboot or you could click on restart now. So the computer will reboot several times during this process. So if you do see another message saying uh, press any key to boot from CD or DVD, make sure you don't press it, otherwise you'll be starting over, but it shouldn't do it after the first time. Okay, rebooting again. Okay, so it should pick your country correctly by default, but if not, you could change it. All right, so make sure you have the right keyboard layout to match your country. You're probably not going to want to add a second layout here. All right, checking for updates. Okay, restarting again. So I'll be either fast forwarding or uh, skipping some parts here so you don't have to watch, you know, circle spinning and that type of thing. Okay, so here's where you need to name your computer. You could skip it if you want to do it later, but I like to do it right now so I don't have to go back and uh, change it later on because you have to reboot once you change the name. So I'm just going to call this Win11. So no more than 15 characters. Uh, you could have dashes and underscores, but no spaces and that type of thing. Okay, so now you're going to need to sign in with your Microsoft account. So hopefully you made a note of your email address and password that is tied to it. You could always go on a different computer and try and log on to the Microsoft website using it to make sure it works. So we'll click on sign in. All right, so I'll put in the email for this test account that I'm using here. Okay, click on next. Now the password tied to this Microsoft account. Click on sign in. All right, so now it's going to want to verify my identity by sending an email to the address I'm using here. So I'll click on that. Now I'll get that code from my phone. Okay, click on verify. Okay, so now on this next screen, if you've logged on to another computer with this Microsoft account, it's going to give you the option to restore your settings, not your files, not your programs, just your settings like uh, OneDrive and uh, you know, desktop wallpaper, things like that. And if you click on more options, you could find other computers you've logged into if you want to pick one of those. But what I like to do is just set it up as a new PC and then I could just, you know, reconfigure everything from scratch. And then I'll click on it again to confirm. All right, so now it wants to make a pin to log in with so that way you don't have to type in your password. So this pin will just be tied to this computer. So if you log in to a different computer, uh, it's not going to be the same unless you make it the same, of course. And then if you want to have letters and symbols, you could check that box. Otherwise, it's just numbers. 
Okay, so now we have the privacy settings. If you want to have uh, your location tracked, find my device, let's say it's a laptop. This won't work unless the laptop is on and connected to the internet if you lose it. I always like to turn these off because Microsoft doesn't need to know what they don't need to know. You could always turn this stuff back on in the Windows settings if you want. All right, click on accept. All right, I'm going to skip all this. I usually like to skip most of the things just to make sure it's as clean as possible. All right, skip the phone setup. You could set this up afterwards if you want to connect your phone to your computer. Okay, we'll skip the OneDrive photo setup here. We'll skip this as well. Okay, we don't want the game pass. All right, checking for updates again. Okay, so this screen takes some time. This is a newer screen in the Windows setup for the uh, updates, so we'll be back when this is done. All right, restarting again. Okay, even more updates. Okay, so we're at our login screen here. So we'll put in that pin that we made during the setup. So since this is a new computer, we're signing in with this user for the first time. It has to set up their user profile. So that's what these next screens are for. So this takes a few minutes. So I will fast forward through these as well. And then every time you add a user to the computer, the first time you log them in, it'll have to go through this process as well. Okay, so now we have our desktop and our start menu. So this computer needs to have its resolution settings changed. So you might run into that problem if you need to install some drivers uh, for your video or sound or network. All right, that's a little better. So I'm recording this video at a low resolution. So that's why everything looks kind of big here. Okay, so now we have Windows installed with our user account right there. And it even remembered our recent documents here as well based on our user account settings. Okay, so once again, uh, things you need to remember. If you have anything on your computer you need to save, make sure you back it up before wiping it. If you have more than one hard drive, take a look at the hard drive and see what size it is for the C drive. Like this one here is 80 gigs. So I know that's the one I want to use, not this 50 gig drive. Uh, make sure you have your Microsoft email and password. Make sure you know your Wi-Fi password if you're on wireless, because you're going to need that to connect. And actually, if you're using wireless, I think it's going to ask you for your wireless password during the setup. This one's on the Ethernet connection, so it doesn't have wireless. And you can see here, that OneDrive is active now on this computer, and I didn't ask it to do that. Microsoft likes to push OneDrive to uh, sync your files. So if that's something you don't want to do, you're going to have to go through and disable it. So I have a video on that as well, which I'll put in the description. So in case you want to revert the OneDrive fiasco here, you could do that. And then, of course, you'll have to go through and tweak all your settings and copy your files back over, install your programs, and all that other good stuff. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. And if you have to watch this video more than once to get the process down, you go for it. And installing Windows, you know, once you do it a few times, you could do it with your eyes closed. It's pretty simple. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe. Mm -hmm.